Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at bayonet lamp holders. And uh, here's a lamp or light bulb, and it has the bayonet end as it's used in the UK. We don't have any of the uh, screw fitting business around here. The only stuff in the UK that has screw fitting ends on is tats that's been imported from other countries. And uh, normally these things hang down in the middle of the room. This is an old type uh, filament one that you're not allowed to buy anymore. And typically the actual holder is made of white plastic, and there's a bit of white flex going up into the ceiling. But uh, in this particular application, what we don't need is white plastic because the actual thing it's going to be fitted into is made of metal and has various decorative glass panels on it. So obviously we don't want uh, nasty, cheap-looking plastic there. So what we're going to do is actually wire up some brass holders and some appropriate flex as well. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with white plastic lamp holders, and they're probably the most common type. But uh, what we've got here is a brass version. And it's got this sort of antique finish because that kind of matches the fitting that's going to be uh, going with. And uh, two pins in the base there with sprung pins. And of course the lamp like this will just fit in like so. And we're not going to be using this particular lamp. I'll probably have an LED or something in it, but uh, it's just there for demonstration. And because it's going to be hanging down from the ceiling, I've got the right here with the actual flex grip on that. You can get these without this part. They're designed just to fit into a stem or some other fixed item. Typically used that way up so you can put it on a table or whatever. And I've actually got two of these, both the same as there's two of these light fittings which need to be installed. Now I haven't actually got the lights here, they're basically just shades with glass decorative panels in the side and various metal parts. So this is obviously needing to be added. And uh, say so normally you'd just use white PVC flex, but again in this particular case uh, that's not going to be appropriate. So what we're going to be using is this black flex we've got here of course is uh, far more appropriate and looks a lot better. Now these things are uh, fairly cheaply available. These ones are actually made in the UK. And they've got various parts here. This ring is normally for the shade, which would fit over that and then clamp in place. In this case they don't have a shade. The actual shade is uh, part of the whole light fitting, so we can first remove that part. And then this ring here just unscrews. And then inside, we can see we have the top part here and then that this ring secures it. And then inside we have the actual holder, two brass uh, sprung pins there, the terminals, and then on the back just got the entry holes for the two wires. And this is all made out of ceramic, designed to operate at high temperatures. Although so in this case we're probably using an LED with it. And those three parts are as there. And then the base here, I've just got the side terminal here, which is for the earth connection, and that's on the outside. And then the threaded piece here, and inside there is a black plastic piece, and that's what actually grips over the cable to hold it in place. So let's start with this cable. And what we've got here is some uh, three core cable, uh, three there, 0.75 square millimetres. And we need three core because, of course, this is metal, and therefore we need to make the uh, connection to the earth on the side here. Normal plastic ones only have two core. And uh, this particular black flex uh, annoyingly has white printing on it. So what we're going to do is to start uh, the actual fitting here, and then of course we won't have the white printing showing when it hangs up in the ceiling. So let's just cut this apart. So we'll just go in here and uh, score along. And I'm just going to uh, cut around here, or score around here. Now this is actually rubber flex as well, because it can better have a matte uh, finish on there, which is somewhat tidier. So just going to break that off at the end there, and again just don't cut in there, make sure you've actually got the three cores uh, undamaged inside. So we've got blue neutral, brown for the line, and the green and yellow for the earth connection. Now in terms of length of these, they do need to be relatively short, because bearing in mind it's only going to fit here with the uh, actual cable grip part there. And then, of course, your wires will come through and the fitting is actually right inside. So these do need to be reasonably short, so we'll just cut those down to a suitable length. And then we'll just strip the ends of the wire. And this is just copper wire, not any of that aluminium rubbish we've seen previously. So I'll just uh, twist those two there. And then we want to do it similarly with the uh, earth connection. I'll actually make that one slightly longer. that. Now in this case we've got a load of spare here, but uh, it doesn't actually particularly matter, but we're going to assemble this in the proper order. 
and also assembling this here because this needs to be tested after it's been assembled. Now, obviously we want to make sure it's been done properly and there's no uh, straight strands of wire getting in the end of that. So in this case we've got this uh, ring here which is the flexed uh, grip part so we'll just place that uh, over those wires and then this piece essentially is a cone shaped uh, arrangement so again that just needs to go over the cable as well so let's we'll place that up there and then this is the next piece which is essentially the uh, bottom part and the wires will go in here now the earth needs to go into this side connector here so we can uh, undo the screw there and that will be uh, wire will actually come through from the inside, but it's obviously tightened on the outside. Now for the moment we're just going to pass all of this through there. And then we come to this piece, which is where the actual wires connect. And the screws are just one on each side. These are symmetrical, as in you can put the uh, lamp in either way, so it doesn't actually matter which of these is the line and which is the neutral. So just undo the screws there, and then the ends of these, uh, so just twisted those, I'm just going to just fold that over, let's move the other way. And just having that gives a much better connection here, and these are both the same length, so it's a question of just placing those in the holes, so that will just poke up onto the other side. And I want the wire to be level with the top of the connection there, not uh, actually poking up any further than that. And I'll just tighten the screws down there. And again with the other side it's going to be exactly the same, so just place it so the wire is essentially near flush with the top of the connector. And just tighten up the screw on the side there. And if you look on the back here, see that the flex uh, or insulation actually goes all the way into the ceramic, so there's no actual bare piece of wire sticking out of the bottom. Of course, that's important because when the lid goes on, it's going to be placed against the metal base of the equipment. So we'll just make sure those are properly tightened. And then the earth side here, we can just do the same thing. We'll just fold that in half. So I've got a sort of a folded over piece there. And again, this needs to be a suitable length, so we can place it into the hole inside there. So it will actually be the same length as the connector on the side. Having done this before, I uh, know what length to cut them at, but uh, if you haven't done these before, then question of uh, just uh, make sure it's the basically cutting it double the length and then folding over. So inside here, see the insulation actually goes right up against the inside of the hole there, and again, it's basically flush on the outside like that. So. Uh, we'll just place that inside, and then we just want to tighten up the connector on the outside. Now this will actually now press down, and it's quite useful to just put a uh, bit of a twist into the wires here, so they will uh, just fit down more easily. And you see there's a groove on the side here, which lines up with the little indent on the side here and the side there. And uh, that's pretty much it there. And while we're doing that, we can just move back in the cable grip and the cap that goes with that. Now, I want the cable grip to ground the black part, so we don't want any of the individual wires showing through out the bottom. So we just sort of attach that like that and give it a sort of a rough alignment. And then we can pull the cap over the top. And this actually has some square sections here which fit into the uh, top of that so it doesn't rotate. So again, we'll just get those into position and then just start to tighten up the threaded section. And we've seen here that the wires uh, just got a sort of one or two twists there just to uh, allow them to be kept tightly in the centre. And there's a slot here on the side and that obviously lines up with the indent here and there's another one around the other side so that will just press in into the base like that. So the only thing then is the uh, top cover and then again that's got the little uh, indents in the side which all line up with the cutouts there and the ring with the chamfer essentially goes over the top of the entire thing and then it's just a question of threading that onto that piece at the bottom. And again I want to make sure that's not uh, cross threaded or something and we'll tighten that down 
and then that should hold the whole thing securely in there. Let me see what this lines up with the uh, dents on the side, and you've got those uh, grooves inside. You can just see the top of the wires poking through in the bottom. So that's perfectly fine. And then on the outside here, we can just tighten up the uh, cable grip there, which will actually just grip onto that and stop it from being pulled out. And we'll just make sure that one on the outside is properly tightened as well. Now in this case, uh, we don't actually need this shade ring because that normally would go on. You put your lamp shade over here and then this would be the ring that holds it in position. But uh, in this case, we're actually going to just turn this up and put it on there and it can act as a sort of a lock ring against the one that holds the thing together. So that's the finished assembly. And because the uh, white printing was here, I've actually just cut that off. So now I've got a uh, just plain black on the section you're actually going to see. And so it does have the white printing uh, somewhat further along. Let's so say that's way up here, so uh, that's more than plenty of length to use in this particular application. So I'll just cut off a uh, reasonable length of that. So we're only going to need about uh, sort of eight to ten inches or so of flex there. It goes up into the ceiling. And the rest will be uh, up in the ceiling connected in elsewhere. Now, so the other one I'm going to do is exactly the same, so I'll do that uh, outside of the video. And this one now needs to be tested so we can actually ensure that the uh, connections are made correctly. And we haven't actually shorted one of these uh, inner conductors onto the metal casing. So, first of all, we're just going to strip the end of the uh, flex here so we can attach things to this end. And we'll just score around the insulation, and then that will just break away reasonably cleanly. And then we'll just strip these three wires to a suitable length. Now, testing this thing, we just need to connect this end to the uh, testing machine. And the machine we're going to use is this one, so we'll just turn that on. And uh, in order to be able to connect this to the machine here, we're going to use this connecting block, which you may have seen in other videos. So it's basically just a normal plug on the end, which goes in here. And then, of course, we can connect our wires to the end over here. And obviously, if this was just normal appliance, we could just plug it straight in. But uh, in this case, we're going to have to use this adapter block, as this will end up being wired up into the ceiling in somebody's house. So uh, we'll just wire that in there with the three wires and close off the lid. Now we also need some wires from this machine, so uh, just get those out of here. And the one we need is this green one, which is to test the earth continuity. And this just attaches to any metal part of the equipment. So in the case of this, it will just be the metal outer ring there. So just clamp that over the top and just place that uh, down on the table. And what we're basically going to be testing is that the earth is actually continuous to the metal casing here and all the way through the wire to the actual earth wire at the end. And this will also test that the insulation between the line of neutral conductors and the earth as well to make sure there's no short circuits or damaged insulation there. Now the thing we've got here is a class one because it's got that metal covering on it. So we're going to use the class one tests over this side where it says earth tools and appliances. And we're going to be using this one here. And we should get a less than a 0.1 ohms resistance on the length of wire. And as they say, it applies uh, 1250 volts between the line neutral and the earth connection. So, uh, assuming this is all good and correct, we should see the two uh, green lights come on here. And the reading here should be less than the uh, 0.1 ohms, which is just here on the scale. So, uh, just press the uh, test button. And you see that's uh, perfectly fine, so it's well below the 0.1, and both the lights are green. So that's a successful test. So it's all that test was successful, so we'll just turn this to the uh, off position temporarily. And then we can undo and remove the uh, green earth lead here. That's, we don't need that any longer, so let's place that away on the top. And then the final step we can do is actually take a normal uh, lamp here. This is just a 40 watt old type one and actually place it in here 
And then we can actually power this thing up from the machine itself just to make sure that the connections actually work because so we're all making sure there's no short circuits and the like. But also it doesn't actually confirm that the thing actually worked. So I'll just put that uh, lamp in there, place it down on the table, and then we can just power it up here. This will actually show the current that the uh, lamp uses. Unfortunately, it's going to be a 40 watts, so the current's going to be extremely small, but uh, nevertheless, we should still see a little movement at that end. So we're going to just turn back to the uh, on position. Uh, we need to press both buttons here. This is the one and a half ounce scale, so it's either 0 to 15 or 0 to 1.5. So press this one and the other, and we should see the lamp come on, and then the current will be displayed. So there we go, that's lighting up OK. And um, we see how we've got the current just being displayed here, but obviously it's extremely small, so uh, it doesn't actually move a great deal. So that's how you wire up a bayonet lamp holder, a pendant variety in this case, which hangs down, but the ones that uh, fit onto the table lamps and things are pretty much the same. They just don't have the flex grip part. It's just a threaded piece that uh, screws onto normally a rod or some other fixture that's permanently attached to the base. And uh, these, of course, are three-core flex because these are metal and they do require the earth connection. Uh, plastic ones just have a two-core flex, normally no earth connection needed on those. And if you're going to actually make or wire these things up, they do need to be tested before use. Ideally, with one of those machines up there or something similar, which uh, applies the uh, 25 amps uh, current through the earth connection to make sure it's not going to uh, fall apart and also 1250 volts to ensure the insulation is of decent quality. But if you haven't got one of those, then at least uh, use a multimeter or something just to confirm you've got the wires connected correctly and you've got continuity between the metal and the earth connector actually at the end of the wire there. And uh, I've done the other one here, it's just the same. Uh, just two of those for the uh, two light fittings which will be installed at a later time. So until next time, thanks for watching.